First, I would like to thank uh, Hamid and Christina Mokadam program in Iranian studies and its director and associate director, Professor Abbas Milani and Ms. Roma Parhad for organizing and hosting this conference at Stanford. The title of my talk today is Translating Meskoub in Pursuit of Iranian Cultural Identity. In a lecture in Toronto about Shah Rukh Meskoub, Ali Banu Azizi stated that Meskoub used to say, my homeland is the Iranian culture, and he deeply believed in this. National identity, which to Meskoub meant cultural identity, was certainly a preoccupation of his, a preoccupation which is evident in his entire corpus of writing. In this presentation, I will explore this question in a number of Meskoub's works, in particular in Dar Kuye Dust, in the Alley of the Friend, and Goftogu Dar Baq, Dialogue in the Garden, two of his works which I have translated into English and with which I'm more familiar. In his book, Hoviyat Irani va Zaban Farsi, Iranian Identity and the Persian Language, in a discussion about the direct and indirect efforts of Iranians to survive as a defeated nation after the Islamic invasion in the 7th century, he states, Despite political dispersion in numerous geographical units under the rule of Arabs, Persians, and Turks, we preserved our nationality, or better stated, our identity, Iranianness, because of the language and in the protective shelter of Persian language. In the same book, he writes, and I quote, after various efforts in the course of 400 years, by returning to their own past history, by establishing Iranian governments, and by relying on, on the Persian language, in the 11th century, Iranians were then a nation with a separate identity of their own. A new nation, not the worn out lethargic people of the late Sasanian era but rather a new nation had been born that was aware of its own identity, self-aware with, with a new religion and civilization. The past was the buttress and the point of reliance of this identity and its manifestation language was a new tree that had grown with the water and air of Islam, but in the soil of its own national memory. Further on, detailing what he means by culture and cultural identity, he observes, in order for a scattered people to assume a form and learn about one another's feelings and acquire sympathy, and as, as a result become an organic collection to become a nation, they have no better means than their language. In his foreword to the uh, to In the Alley of the Friends, Meskoub explains that a few years prior to writing that book, he had been contemplating and planning to write a treatise about the trilateral relationship of man, the world, and God, without intending to investigate religion or any other idea or concept. He then tells us, and I quote, I wanted to base my work only on the Gathas. In other words, I wanted to organize my thoughts according to the structure, the connections, and the continuity of the worldview of these hymns and shape my own thinking within this warp and weft in order for the idea to be born and become universal. Meskoub's contemplation of the relationship of man, the world, and God, in connection with which he intends to go back to what he terms the sources is within the Iranian culture. Hence, 
in his intended work, he is attempting to make the national and local idea of the nature of that relationship universal and general. In his investigation, Zoroaster's hymns constantly remind him of the Qazars of Hafez. Each time he says, a Qazal greeted the stanza of a hymn and took over my mind, leaving no room for anything else. Thus it is that he goes on what he calls a pilgrimage to the poet, the result of which is, in my opinion, one of, if not the most enlightening and inspiring reading of the poetry of Hafez. As I have argued elsewhere, Meskub's approach in most, is most creative and innovative. And although highly informed by the required historical and cultural background and grounded in opposite, opposite, opposite philosophical, mystical and literary knowledge, he pursues a path distinct from conventional scholarship in Hafez studies. In his foreword to the, in the alley of the friend, Meskoub describes his examination of Hafez's poetry as an endeavor to find his way into the garden of Hafez's divan, take an excursion in that garden and describe what he observes. Meskoub's excursion, however, is not an excursion to observe the exterior of the garden, the mere exploration of what he calls the linguistic and rhetorical magic of the poet, but rather an exploration of the interior of the thinking and the inner working of the mind that produced these ghazals, these love songs. <clears throat> A look at the corpus of Meskub's writing shows that among all Persian classical poets, his top favorites are Ferdowsi and Hafez. While in Ferdowsi's Book of Kings, he attempts to identify the cultural components of Iranian identity in Hafez's ghazals and his poetry in general, he seems to look for something beyond the mythological and historical roots of that identity. In his exploration of Hafez's poetry and in his struggle to understand him, he seems to sense the need to identify with the poet, to assume the identity of the speaker of Hafez's ghazals, in order to understand his own Iranian identity. Hence, rather than speaking about Hafez, Meskub seems to summon the spirit of the poet through his poems to act as a medium or a channel as it were, and to allow, allow Hafez to speak through him. After all, Meskub is quite aware of the status of Hafez among Persian speakers as a spiritual and cultural icon, a poet recited perhaps more than any other, but who seems to compre less com comprehensible than any other. Speaking about Hafez, Meskub observes, is a daunting task because he continues, he is closer to us than any other poet, and at the same time, he is more remote than any other poet. We have all had some dealings with him in one way or another. Some of us have become familiar with him and some have expressed devotion to him. He has been within us and has lived inside us as long as we have let him be as he is. But as soon as we have tried to delve into him through scholarship, logical analysis and so on, he has slipped out of our grasp and disappeared before our myopic eyes. Identity, especially collective identity, is a very fragile thing, and its fragility is more clearly apparent when the individual's sense of collective identity is threatened and shattered. In his dialogue in the garden, Meskub explores the question of identity in relation to individuals and groups that have left their native country and culture and live as immigrants, whether by choice or by force. 
in a country and culture alien to their own, a context that provides ample opportunity for examining what occurs when one's individual or collective identity is threatened. Immigrants are a special breed, whether forced by political, economic or other circumstances or simply because of a desire for change, an immigrant is thought to be uprooted from one culture and planted into another. In reality, however, neither the uprooting nor the transplantation is usually thorough. For a voluntary immigrant as well as a forced exile, the positive side of this transplantation includes enjoyment of whatever the two cultures have to, can offer. But often, this phenomenon, instead of creating a combined or hybrid identity for the immigrant, results in the schizophrenic identity in that, rather than having a sense of belonging to both cultures, the immigrant, particularly the exile, feels that he or she has been uprooted from his or her natural environment without having been able to establish roots in the other culture. And like people for many other cultures, Iranians seem to have been traditionally reluctant to immigrate to other countries, especially in large groups. In the New World, for instance, while there are immigrant communities from various parts of the world, including the Middle East, dating back to at least the 19th century until the recent decades after the Islamic Revolution in Iran in 1979, the number of Iranian immigrants was sparse and there existed no identifiable Iranian immigrant community in the United States or other parts of the American continent. Since the Islamic Revolution, the number of, the, of Iranians who have left their homeland and settled in various parts of the world, particularly in Europe and North America, has been significant, amounting to several million people, and since this is the first Iranian mass immigration and a new experience for them, these new immigrants face many psychological and cultural challenges common among all immigrant communities. Although by, by and large these Iranian immigrants are either highly educated or rel relatively affluent and therefore do not face the economic hardship encountered by many other immigrant groups, their lack of historical experience as immigrants as well as their conscious or subconscious efforts to distance themselves from the country and the government of the country that is presented in the media as a prior and sponsor of terrorism have brought them a sense of alienation and rootlessness. Despite the advantages of transplantation for many voluntary immigrants, the struggles of the relatively more recent, especially older Iranian immigrants in trying to cope with their new cultural identity have preoccupied some scholars with questions pertaining to immigrants in general and especially questions of identity assimilation and the yearning on the part of the forced emigres to return home someday. These are some of the questions that Shah Rukh Meskou deals with in his dialogue in the garden that pertain to the main, to his main concern that is cultural identity and which I will discuss briefly here. Initially, however, I will summarize, I'm sure, and successfully the plot of the book itself to provide some context. Dialogue in the garden is an intellectual conversation between a writer and a painter, a nephew and an uncle, regarding various aspects of Iranian culture, art, literature, language, history, and identity. Even more importantly, perhaps, these two intellectuals discuss the concept of the Persian garden in general and par paradise in particular, both in the concrete and abstract sense, a concept that which Meskoub uses as a metaphor for cultural identity. In the abstract sense, as it relates to the subject of exile and the story of a boxing champion 
his friend in the final part of dialogue in the garden deals with the presence or even the fear of loss of this abstract garden or paradise that Ms. Kloop has tried, I think, successfully to convey. The writer relates that one night he visited Vazgen, the former Iranian boxing champion who had ended up 10 or 12 years earlier in the, in the United States and now lives near uh, Washington, D.C. Vazgen has grown up in, work, in the working class neighborhoods and streets in Tehran and the way he talks is as if he has just left, he has just, uh, left his gang of street smart roughnecks in Darvaz Dolat or area or Amjadiye Square yesterday with a thick Iranian, uh, with a thick Tehran accent. In the United States, after several years of working as a laborer and errand boy, he finally becomes a boxing coach for the police and works for a couple of years in other places until he's, he was told one day that they were out of funds and he was laid off. With a, uh, with a commendation and proposal for a part-time job as a children's boxing coach, just one or two hours a week. With Vazgen's expression of frustration regarding having lost his previous status as a champion in Iran and his present circumstances in the United States, Ms. Koop explores the consequences of the loss of cultural identity in regard to this Armenian-Iranian transplanted boxing champion, Ms. Koop further complicates the question of cultural identity by providing an account of Vazgen's family history. Vazgen says, when they threw us out of Russia, they had told my father either become a citizen or get lost. He said that he would get lost. They put him in jail and kicked my mother and me and my sister out. In four, I was four. My sister was nine. When mama got to Iran, she didn't know the language and did not have a cent. The relatives around Rezai, her relatives were around Rezai. My mama raised the two of us on a shoestring by working. I don't know, I don't want to say how. The dialogue between the writer and, and the painter and the philosophical discussion also revolves around the notion of Iranian collective identity. But this notion seems more tangible in the reminiscences of a Russian-born Iranian-Armenian boxer, an exile in exile, whose acquired Iranian roots and identity are shattered once again. The complications of exile or immigration are manifested in a different form in Jalil, a former truck driver and also bodybuilder champion. Jalil is a man of 60 odd, uh, 60 odd years old. The, the, uh, Vazgen says about, uh, about his friend Jalil, we've been friends for years. He was Elush's rival, the male star of Iranian cinema. Jalil has been quiet all the time during Vazgen's reminiscences, reminiscences sipping his drink. The, the writer asked Jalil whether he came to the United States with Vazgen, to which he replies, no sir, I came two years ago because of the kids. First my wife came and then me. When he's asked what he does for a living, he responds, I go to night school. What is this? Door. What is that? Hand. At my age. What is this? What is that? No matter how much I say, I'm a user, I'm an addict. No sir, it does no good. And when the writer asks what, what he is addicted to, with a smirk and a hint, Jalil answers, grape juice. Hajar Mahmoud Jalilvan has now become Jim. In the class, the teacher asks, what is your name? I say, Hajar Mahmoud Jalilvan. She asks, what? I said, Hajar She says, this is too long. We, we will call you Jim. I became Jim. They have given me a name. Now she says, Jim, give me a word st uh, starting with V. I say vodka. One with W. I say whiskey. She says one with B. I say black and white. She says, you won't learn English like that. You always say the names of liquors. 
I want to tell her I won't learn it any other way either. Miss Coop dialogue in the garden is best described as a disguised autobiography. True, it is an intellectual autobiography, but it is also perhaps a collective autobiography of sorts, an exploration of Iranian cultural identity, not within the physical borders of the country, which today is called Iran, but the exploration of that identity globally. Thank you.